Hi, Andrew. Hello. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. I love talking about this show. I was just talking to Jefferson a little while ago. Uh, I think my first question is the same for both of you. Uh, What is it like being part of this gigantic team of people? Because the show has so many moving parts, so many characters, so much going on. What's it like as an actor for you? Yeah, it is. That's a really good question. It is like being part of its of of a town of like its own village in a way. And there are, you're right. There's the there's like the on camera, there's the crew, there's the wranglers, there's the stunt guys, there's the overlap of all of those things. It's like um it is. It's like being a part of it's a it's like being a part of a small town. And yet everybody in the town is also part of an extended family. Mm. Um, and it is like being a part of a, a, of a, of a big sort of family um, or like a, a cult with no belief system. It's, it is really a wonderful sense of community. Mm. That's amazing. What is Taylor like as a creator behind this show? Because you know, every time I hear interviews or, or conversations about the show, you know, his name is front and center. And I mean, that's not always the case with creators. What is, what is he like? I, as I love him professionally and personally, and to the, to the extent that I'm not sure if I could, if, if I could even pick which part or which relationship with him that I like more, the thing that thing that's the greatest about him um in my experience is that he's so collaborative he's so empowering to the actor he there's all of the boundaries are in place and yet there's also this feeling of like screw the rules like there's a feeling of going rogue when you're shooting with him and it's like it it just is adventurous and alive and fast and he knows what he wants and he's so smart and it's fun. It feels like sports. It fe- when you're shooting with Taylor, it feels like you're, it reminds me of when I used to play sports hmm. and that's, that's amazing. the greatest feeling. What, you know, from season three to now, what do you think has changed the most for her? Because obviously some things have shifted and changed since then. Uh, What are some of the biggest things? I think, well, it's funny. I think of a lot of things that haven't changed for her, which is she's just so in the moment. She's really so in the moment. So she's just constantly reacting to that. Um, You know, I would say that... I was, I was just talking about this, but I feel like Teeter found her home at the Dutton ranch that this like kind of lifetime journey since she lost or left her home as a young person. Um, she's like found it in these, in these, in these guys in this bunkhouse and on this ranch. Um, and I would say that that already inherent loyalty and desire for kind of a siblinghood is just even stronger. So there's just more at stake if it goes away. I'm curious for you as a person, what do you think the most challenging thing would be to jump into this lifestyle? Because I I don't know that I'd survive it too well. I, I, I'm curious how you would feel. Um, I would, I, I, the heart for me personally, um, you mean the ranch lifestyle or the Dutton lifestyle? Because, well, <laughs> let's start with but, the ranch. <laughs> um, what would be the hardest thing for the ranch? Um, I think there would be a big adjustment period in terms of seeing just dead animals. That would be an adjustment period for me. Um, I just, um, I've, I've just been reading a book about this woman, um, the solace of open spaces that, uh, our DP gave to me, uh, last season. And it's about a woman who went and worked, um, this ranch life. So I've been reading a lot about it and there's a lot of it that I frankly would rather do than act, to be honest with you. I like that kind of rooted lifestyle, but I think 
you know, you don't see a lot of dead animals, you know, in uh, my suburban lifestyle. So I think that would be it. I remember when I was in Texas and I was learning to cut, going on a cat, going on a cattle ranch to go sort cattle and work them. And there were a lot of, there were a few dead cat cows mm. laying around. And that was like, I was like, Oh, that was a little jarring. I'm sure. Well, and then in terms of the Dutton lifestyle, I mean, I think most of it would be jarring. I'm curious where you think she fits into all of that. How do you think she kind of makes herself fit with that? I feel like it, I literally feel like it's her perfect match hmm. because Teeter is going to fight for what she believes in, even if that's just like you took my bar seat. Um, <laughs> And she's incredibly loyal, mm-hmm. really, really, really loyal and is very, so I feel like it's this very perfect combination where she's incredibly loyal and she'll kick the crap out of somebody um, to protect that. Maybe. And that's why it makes a lot of sense that she was the first woman branded, really. I mean, to see how she stands up next to the, the, the boys I mean, it, it's, it's, she's, she's a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. I mean, I love, I, I am under the impression that I can beat men up um, of any size because the show is written and choreographed for me to do things like this. And so I walk through the world now, like I could beat you up. And I, and I forget that it, that my muscle memory is just a well choreographed fight scene. <laughs> That is a great attitude, though, to gain from a show that, like, you know, you are you get a toughness from that. That's amazing. No, it's, like, maybe not so healthy. Like, I walk through the world, and I had this actually when I was young because I did a lot of martial arts as a kid. Um, and so I and I played a lot of sports, so I definitely have an incredibly aggressive side. But like, I move through the world. I don't want to just beat up a decent person, but I, like, walk around hoping that I see somebody doing something wrong to someone else or something bad where I need to protect someone. And I can just see like, could I pummel someone? Could I really beat the crap out of someone? I'd like to, I'm like, I want to know. That's amazing. Well, it's scary. <laughs> the last thing I want to know is in terms of her relationship with Colby, where yeah. do you think things could go in the future? Is there a future for them? Is that something that's more of a wish and a dream or or what do you think stands to happen there? Or do you hope would happen maybe? I think that there's a um I think that there's a unspoken uh relating that what they can they do um for a myriad of reasons that we don't have time to get into. Um but I feel like like Teeter just like really wants to get naked. You know what I mean? Like I don't I think she's like hoping for true love. Like <laughs> she loves people, but her brain just doesn't work in like a, like Teeter's not thinking about getting like married and settling down. She just, it's right now. What's happening right now? That's what, that's where she is. That's amazing. I mean, I think this is why for of people love the character is that exact thing that she's so spontaneous. Yeah. And it's like, she also is just this like animal part of us that like, we try so hard to like pummel down to like, you know, all day long, but like, she's just like, we're not at the end of the day. What motivates us a lot, no matter how much we want to dress it up are like very basic animal needs. (laughs) Well, on that note, I can't wait to see what happens in season five. I'm looking forward to seeing seeing a lot more of her. Me, yeah, yeah, me too. I'm excited. Thank you so much for the time. Really a pleasure. Thanks so much. Likewise.